So you're interested in marketing, you don't know where to start. Well, this episode's for you. How are regular folks like you and I that aren't blessed with massive marketing budgets supposed to compete in spaces that take a ton of money, a ton of time, and a ton of resources, all while trying to stay sane? That's the question. And on this podcast, we're here to help you find answers. Welcome to the Marketing Stuff Podcast. Recently, I was listening to another podcast called Brainy Business. I definitely recommend it. And she talked about doing a fundamentals episode or fundamental series. And I recently started teaching at a local college where I'm teaching principles of marketing. And originally, I was going to stream the principles of marketing episodes live. But what I decided to do instead was to create a fundamental series. And so this is the first episode in the fundamental series. This series is going to help you build the foundation that you need in order to be a successful marketing practitioner. Now, I'm also going to share with you throughout the series, I'm going to share with you notes. And we're going to use this to build on other aspects and, and potentially other series in the future. So that way we all know and we're all speaking the same language. So throughout this video, I'm going to be referencing notes that I make available to my students. You can get those same notes if you go to mauriceadavis.com forward slash vault. You'll get access to that information. So without further ado, let's jump into these notes and get you some foundation of marketing. All right. So let's talk about this document and you will be able to get this. If you go over to mauriceadavis.com forward slash vault, you'll be able to get access to this document as well. So don't worry about it. If you're trying to take notes, feel free, uh, but you can get a copy of this by registering for the vault. All right, cool. So let's go through. During this episode, what we're going to do is we're going to help you define the role of marketing. We're going to detail the evolution of marketing over time. And then we're going to describe how marketers create value for products or services. So let's get into this. We've got a decent amount to cover. So learning objective one, defining the role of marketing. So marketing, according to the AMA, are the activity sets of intentions and the process for creating, capturing, communicating, delivering, and exchanging offerings that have value for customers, clients, partners, and society at large. That is a mouthful. One of my mentors describes marketing as marketing is talking to the right people with the right message at the right time and place. And I like this one because this is so much more simple and easy to remember. Okay. And so if we think about it like this, this will encompass this piece up here. So let's talk about the core aspects of marketing. Marketing is an exchange of value. It's important to understand that marketing is about exchanging value. And I want to highlight that I mean value. It's not money. It's not emails. It's value. And for us, we have to understand that for you and I, the value is this. It's payment. It's information. Okay. For the customer, the value are the goods, the services, the communications, sometimes the information. Right. And so the process of marketing is this cycle. We have something that we want to deliver. Our customers or buyers have something they want to receive, and they're willing to exchange something to get what we have to deliver. And it's the cycle of value that makes marketing an exchange, right? This is just a side note from me that for this exchange to happen, there has to be a significant level of ease, right? The buyer has to feel like they're getting more than what you're trying to charge them. And we'll talk about a mental model that you can use to kind of establish what that level needs to look like. Marketing impacts stakeholders. So marketing can impact your customers, vendors, society, and partners. And if we think about this definition up here, that is one of the values of this definition is that it really talks about all the audiences that marketing can impact. So let's look at this. When we think about it impacting our vendor societies, partners. Marketing has the ability to shape culture. It has the ability to drive business. And those impacts are going to affect folks that you're not even conscious of at this time, right? Think about when cigarette marketing was huge. And the marketing for that is what convinced people that it was okay to smoke. And now we have people that have lung cancer. We have families that have a history of smoking. And we know that it's bad for your health. 
or the people that were marketing that they innately have to take responsibility for the impact they've had on the on the society at large. Now, I'm not saying they're bad people for marketing or anything like that. Like, that's not what we're getting at here. I'm not passing judgment, but I just want to use an example that I think we can look at and say, okay, when you say it affects society at large, you mean like it could have far reaching consequences for a long time. Absolutely. If we're not effective, then our partners, the people that are counting on us to be in business, our partners, our vendors, well, we could fail, right? And sometimes your vendors float you products and services. Like, hey, I'll come do this job for you and you pay me in 45 days. You pay me in 60 days. And this is outside of the scope of this, but I'm talking about like net terms, net 30, net 45, net 90, right? Okay, that if your marketing team's bad at it, You'll go bankrupt. You'll have no money to pay those people at the end of that 45 day period. Money. So now your vendors or your partners, they're just kind of struck. And, and I think most of us can kind of get on board with this idea of it impacting our customers. So marketers, we have an ethical and a social dilemma because marketing can help or hurt our community. Okay. So marketing can be done by people or companies. So there are different categories of marketing, and we'll, we'll break these down, but manufacturers create their products and then sell them to retailers, right? In between that, we would call that B2B, or we would say that's B2B marketing. Then retailers take those products that they bought, they mark them up, and then they go to sell them to consumers. That's B2C or B2C marketing. And then consumers, right, I don't want this anymore, so I'm going to sell it on like Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist to another person that would be C to C or to consumer to consumer. There is a fourth idea and that's human to human. And this is a human centered approach to marketing or business. And basically all this is saying is that everybody is a human. And so if we focus on the humanness or the human nature of the person, our marketing and businesses will be better able to connect with the people that we want to serve or want to buy our products. Marketing is about satisfying the customer's needs and wants. Now, if we want to get good and we want to create marketing that matters, we have to understand what it is that our customer wants, what it is that they need, and those are not the same thing, right? I need food, but I want the food to taste good. It don't have to. Bread and water will get you a long way, but I need some meat in my life, right? I need some seasoning. Oh, real! American delicious meats. And that's a want. That's not a need. I don't need Lowry's, right? If you know what I'm talking about, drop it in the comment. But I want it. And so that's when we start talking about wants versus needs. And so we have to understand as marketing professional, what is it that our customer needs? And in many cases, more importantly, what is it that they want? People will do a lot, a lot for the things that they desire, for the things that they want. Oftentimes, the things that they need, they're not very motivated to fulfill those needs, right? Like, not to a high level. I need toilet paper. I have an opinion about the kind that I want to use, but I'm going to be real with you. If I can get something that's, you know, 80% as good for 50% of the cost, I might switch, okay? Because I need toilet paper. And we could debate that if I need it or not, but... Y'all get what I'm saying. All right. Marketing creates value through products, price, place, and promotion decisions. Now, this is based off the model, the four P's model. If you do your own research, you will see that there's multiple models of this marketing mix. You got four P's, seven P's, and I recently was doing some research and I saw 13. I think, in my opinion, I think that seven P's is optimal, but for the sake of our foundation. And, and really understanding we're only going to go with four. Only going to go with four, okay? So marketers need to be comfortable with these variables, okay? If you're not comfortable with these, you will struggle eventually in your marketing career. And for now, we're just going to look at them. We're going to talk about them. And then as you are doing more of your learning, you need to be thinking about how do I process this and when I'm doing certain activities, where am I at in these quadrants? And how can I optimize one of these? I think about these as like levers that you can pull to optimize your success. So the first one is product. This is how we go about creating value. I would even say that this show is a product, right? 
I realized that there are a group of you that are trying to learn marketing. You want to learn it from a perspective of not feeling like somebody's selling you something and you're just interested in what information is out there and you just want the information. And so the product that I deliver is an information-based show, okay? Price captures value, okay? So when I say that this show is worth, like if I were to have a Patreon and like, hey, it's $1.99 a month and you get XYZ from me, that would be the capture of value, okay? And when you decide that you want to pay for that, then we have exchanged value. Place, I, I think this is probably one of the more complicated because oftentimes place gets looked at as like, where is it? But if we really look at it, it's the things that have to happen, the tools or the communications or the journey that has to happen for someone to learn about your product and then someone to receive your product. Both of those have to do with place. And the book that I'm using defines it as delivering value. Okay, so everything that has to happen to get the item to the customer, right? We'll talk a little bit more about this marketing channel management in just a second. And then promotion, that's communicating value. This is the part of marketing that people see. This is the part when somebody says, I'm going to go into marketing. 99% of the time, this is what you're talking about. Okay. So marketing channel management, uh, it's also called supply chain management, refers to the set of approaches and techniques firms employ to efficiently and effectively integrate their suppliers. So it's how you get all of your people on, on one accord and you make sure stuff's working right. So if I send you an email and you click on that and you buy a product, that's part of my marketing channel management. That email service, that checkout cart, anything else that was used is all part of my marketing channel management. Okay, so we just finished with uh, learning objective one. Let's go into learning objective two. Hey, Maurice here, different Maurice than from the show that you're watching right now. Uh, if you want access to all the resources that I'm talking about and you don't want to have to write them down in the notes below, you'll find a link. If you register there, I have included all the resources that I talk about inside of this free database. Uh, it's yours. So get back to the show. I hope you enjoy. And that is detailing the evolution of marketing over time. So companies spend billions of dollars worldwide on marketing. If spending went away, we have to understand that the global economy would collapse. If we didn't have advertising, searching is like Google. They charge you money per search. Facebook and other social media platforms would be paid subscriptions. You'd have to pay a few dollars a month, 5 to $20 a month to have a Facebook. And the newspaper sites probably wouldn't exist. They still charge, but the cost is fairly minimal in relation to the actual price, okay? Or to the relation of like how much they have to spend in order for that company to exist. So let's talk about the four eras of marketing. The first one was production, uh, 1860 to about 1920s. Now you may find different dates if you go look this stuff up, which I highly recommend you do. And during this time, companies were focused on creating goods and products that allowed you, that were based on the quality of the product. This is where the idea that the best product wins. That, that's where this idea came from, okay, during the production age. During this period, your clients and customers didn't have very many options. That You went into the store, there were maybe two brands of milk. Like, <laughs> there was one, there was three brands of eggs. Ah, uh, no more eggs? Maybe. Right. And so you only had the choices that were there. There wasn't a lot. And so like if if you were the option that was available, you were successful because that's just what you could get. OK, then right around World War Two, manufacturers had more products than customers wanted to buy. And the sales era started to about 1920s and that lasted to about 1950. And so businesses started depending heavily on personal selling and advertising. This, like, think about your Kirby salesman, your Tupperware parties, all that stuff was is sales focused. Your door-to-door -door salesman. This is the era when door-to-door -door salesmen became a thing because they needed to sell more stuff. Okay, marketing. The marketing era started about 1950 to about 2010, and this was like companies realized that they need to start focusing on what the customer wanted to buy and need before they even started really producing stuff because they were creating things that people didn't want. And then right around 2010 is the value-based marketing error. 
And that's when firms started to acknowledge that just doing what the customer wanted wasn't enough. And they had to provide more additional value, better value, greater value in order to gain the customer's business. And so when we say value, what we mean is it reflects the relationship of benefits to cost or what the customer gets for what they give up. And so customers started re requiring way more, right? And you see this happen a lot. And there are phenomena that they talk about. One is like the Amazon effect, right? It's this idea that customers require things to come faster. And then there's the Starbucks effect. And then there's the Walmart effect. Like all these things are happening because of the markets that are being created and how our customers are interacting with those spaces and applying those same thoughts to everything. All right, let's move on. So these are just a few important concepts to understand. You have your value co-creation. So this is when a customer collaborates with the manufacturer or retailer to create their product or service. A big proponent of value co-creation is like Dale. If you get on somebody's website and you design a product or you go into a showroom and you have to design the product before you buy it, that's value co-creation. They're asking you, what is it that you exactly want? And when you tell me what you want, I'm going to create that, okay? Then there's relational orientation. So that's a method of building a customer relationship based on the philosophy that a buyer and seller relationship should be over the long term. Now we talked about human to human. These two ideas are interrelated, right? Okay. Then we have our customer relationship management. So this is a business philosophy. It's a set of strategies. They're programs and systems. So when you hear people talk about customer relationship management, oftentimes they're talking about these tools. But these tools happen because the philosophy and set of strategies required something a little bit better. And so people started saying like, hey, we got to get good at customer relationship management so that we can increase the lifetime value of a customer. And we're not going to get into lifetime value today. We will get into it in a later date, right? So there are some tools I would highly suggest. Salesforce is number one. So if you're looking to get a job as a corporate marketing professional, I would go spend some time over on Salesforce's website. They have some trainings that you can do for their marketing uh, tools. I would I'd spend some time on HubSpot. If you're looking to corporately, I wouldn't do Zoho. I would probably do Marketo or Adobe if you're trying to be a corporate marketer. These are some tools that you just want to be familiar with and at least be able to function in them so that you can say you have some experience. Just kind of putting that out there. All right. That's the end of learning objective two. Now we're moving on to learning objective three. Let's see here. So describe how marketers create value for products and services. So the first one is adding value. So it's the use of customer data and feedback to make adjustments to the benefits that you're providing in the offer. Now, this was not in the textbook that I'm using. So I added this. This actually comes from Alex Hermosley's book. If you're not familiar with him, go check him out over on YouTube or his podcast, The Game. So what is an offer? The offer initiates the value exchange between seller and buyer. It's the product and the service you agree to give and how you accept payments and the terms of the agreement. And I love his definition because how you accept payment makes a difference and the terms of the agreement make a difference. You could have the same service and adjust the terms of the payment as in instead of requiring all up front, I take it monthly and allow somebody to pay with credit card and now they're willing to move forward when before you might've been saying, I want cash all up front. Cash. Cash. You're providing the same service. You may even be giving them virtually the same deliverable, but the offer is not the same because you change payment terms. Okay, so some elements of an offer. This is not from Hormozzi's book. This is straight from HubSpot. It needs to be of high quality and valuable to your target audience. It needs to align with your business and products or services that you offer, be tailored to the right buyer persona, and be delivered at the right time. In class, an example that I use of like, you could be the best lawnmower in the world, you could have the best price, but if you come right after I just got my lawn cut, you're in the wrong place right? So all of these other things may be perfect. And I think sometimes we even look at these and we're like, I got to get all these three right. But we forget, like sometimes you're just at the wrong time. That's why this idea up here, customer relationship management is so important because you could be at the wrong time with the right customer at the right place, but you just missed one element. Okay. This right here, the Livingston value equation. Uh, I got this from 
Ryan Levesque. And it's a mental model that you can use to determine, like, am I delivering enough value? And so it basically suggests that you need to have 10 times the amount of value than what you're asking for. And so the example that he used is, like, many of his students in a program make 200 k as a result. You can charge 20000 for the high coaching co program because the result that you're delivering is 200 k in additional revenue and a money-back guarantee. So this makes the total value 10x or greater than 10x. Okay, so our ultimate aim is to reduce the risk of doing business with us to a level where somebody feels silly saying no. And if you read Alex Ramosi's book, he talks about this. You, you make an offer where somebody feels ridiculous saying no. Okay, some other ways that marketing creates value is marketing analytics. We have to be familiar with how to use data in order to make decisions. This is not negotiable. Part of the reason why I'm even doing this series is because I noticed that in my data, it showed that y'all were looking for stuff around like marketing courses. So I'm taking this and I'm going to turn it into a marketing course, but it's because I see the data, right? Okay. Social and mobile marketing, uh, marketing professionals, as we continue to embrace social and mobile media, it's allowed us to connect better and faster with our customers. Okay. And one of the things that I really enjoy is being able to see and engage with customers in near real time. And you can get feedback on content and offers that you're producing in near real time. Recently, I created an event. I thought it was cool. I published it up on an event website. I ran a few bucks in ads and I was like, hey, if I can get one person to sign up for this that is not within my network, it's worth doing. In like 10 days, 12 days, I get nobody signed up for it. So that means they don't want it. Cool of an event as I thought it was and as valuable as I think it will be, it doesn't matter. And that's what social and mobile marketing has allowed us to do. We talked a little bit about this ethical social dilemma. As time progresses and we become more aware of the impact that our brands can have, this is becoming more of a question. Like, how do we go about balancing this idea of our social focus versus the focus of generating revenue? Well, what we find is that brands that have a strong social orientation actually produce a higher degree of trust through the customer. It, it makes your customer feel like you're going to be around longer. And typically, typically investors feel stronger about that brand. Now, this doesn't mean that you can just attach a social cause onto the back end of your marketing and everything's going to be okay. But it does mean that if the numbers look good, right, you're producing revenue and your business is healthy and you find a social cause that aligns with your mission and you add it to your business, you may see that customers are more willing to work with you than they were before. OK. All right. So that is the end of your first marketing fundamentals lesson. If you'd like access to this document, you can get it over on Maurice a davis.com forward slash the vault. Also, the link for the vault is in the notes. So you can grab that there too, right? So if you're watching on YouTube, it's down there. If you're listening on your, your podcast apps, it, it's down in the notes. You can click that and take you over there. Uh, inside the vault, you'll also get notes from other podcasts that I've done that we've included this type of content. If you find this helpful, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, outside of that, stay out here winning, y'all. Thank you.